Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at this quite simple but rather effective feather vortex effect. So firstly, let's check up on our project setup. Uh, I'm going for a square project here, 1080 by 1080. I'm going for a frame rate of 24 and a duration of 20 seconds. Now, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to come to 1423 on the timeline and I'm going to mark, mark play range out. And I'll explain why I've done that later on. So the first thing I want to do is, as usual, come to generators and bring in a color solid and make it black, just so we've got something nice and safe to composite against. And then I'm going to make a new group, object new group. And into this group, I'm going to bring the element that is going to create our nice effect. And that is generators and membrane. Now, membrane is really kind of pretty confusing. It looks amazing, but it's like, how on earth do you control this thing? So uh, let's go about trying to control it. And we can do that by simplifying some of these crazy numbers. First of all, I don't want any speed in this instance, and that'll be obvious why later on. So all of these start values, I'm going to set to negative two. And you can see already that's uh, enormously simplified things. So end one and end two, I'm going to set to zero. End three, I'm going to set to negative 1.25. And end four, I'm going to set to one. So now we've got something that's much more manageable. And the only thing we need to do is you can see there's a kind of like a bit of a gray stripe down here. And we can fix that by setting the offset value to 0.25. And you'll see that goes away. And that's related to this end three value, which as you saw was negative 1.25. That offset just kind of moves it out of the way, basically. So we've got our membrane set up. And what we're going to do in order to animate it is to add an oscillate to the end one value. So right click, add parameter behavior, oscillate. And the amplitude wants to be 0.12. And the rest is fine. So that's given us this animation. So the next step is I want to add a rectangular mask. So I'm going to come down here and draw a rectangular mask just roughly like that. And then let's set it up properly. So the size, I want to go with a width of 1080 and a height of 2500. And I want to set this feather value to negative 450. Then I'm going to scoot over to properties. And what I'm going to do is I set its X anchor point to negative 540 and then rotate it through 45 degrees. So 45 degrees like that. And we also need to make sure that that position is centered on X and Y. And the other thing we want to do is take that membrane and scale that down to 50%. So now we can take this membrane and we use it to make a replicator. So object replicate. And then what we're going to do is for the shape, we're going to choose spiral. I want a radius of 125 and then I'm going to come down and enable a line angle. I'm also going to enable additive blend. And then the important thing is this source frame offset value here. I'm going to set that to 10 because obviously I don't want them all to be the same. So I want different parts of the incoming animation. So I'm going to set that to 10 and you'll see that We've now got this kind of nice organic animation. And uh, now this is where I'm going to explain why I've set the play range, because if we look beyond the play range, you'll see we're getting this sort of skipping effect. And that's because beyond the play range, we're sort of running out of source media to work with. So that's why we did that. And we could have done it a different way, but so that's, that's the simplest way I could think of for this tutorial. So then to this group, I'm going to add a circular mask. So come down here, select the circular mask, hold down shift and option and drag out a mask more or less like that. Let's set the radius to 260. 
and let's have a feather of negative 5. And we also need to invert it. And most importantly, we need to come over to Properties and make sure that it's centred up. In actual fact, I'm not entirely happy with that mask. I think I might just go for 280, make it a little bit subtler. Yes, I think I'm going to go with that. And then I want to add a little bit of colour to this replicator. So what I'm going to do is come down to Colour Mode, and I'm going to pick from Colour Range. And I'm going to come into the Gradient Library, and right down at the bottom there's something called Smoky Mountains, which I think is quite nice for this. But obviously you've got loads of options, you could build your own gradient or whatever. I kind of just like the, the feel of this one. So then I'm going to close down this group, and then I'm going to duplicate it. Right-click Duplicate. And all I'm going to do is set its scale to 75%, and open up the rotation, and have a Y rotation of 180. So these two are not behaving in exactly the same way, and that's what we want. So let's duplicate it again. Right-click Duplicate. This time, let's set a scale of 55%. Let's zero out that Y rotation, but let's have a Z rotation of 45 degrees. And then let's duplicate it one more time. Right-click Duplicate. This time we're going to have a scale of 37%, and we'll just add back in that Y rotation on top of the Z rotation. So now they're all just a little bit different, and that's actually looking rather nice. So then I'm going to make a new group at the top, and I'm going to put all four elements inside it. And to this group, I'm going to add a little bit of a subtle Z rotation. So right-click on the Z rotation, Add Parameter Behavior, Rate, and let's set that rate value to three degrees. So also to this group, I'm going to add filters, color, and color curves. And I just want to brighten it up just like that, I think, just to give it a bit more punch. And I'm also going to add filters, glow, and neon. And what I want to do here is I want to knock back that mix value to 10%. And the outer glow value, I want to bump up to 512. So this is nice soft glow that we've got now. So then I'm going to make another new group at the top, Object New Group. Into this group, I'm going to come to Add Object Generators, and I'm going to add Lens Flare. I'm going to set the size to 500. The intensity I'm going to set to 4. Uh, the Fall Off I'm going to set to 10. And I don't want any streak intensity, and I don't want any ring radius. And to this lens flare, I'm going to add a circular mask. So hold down the Shift and Option key, drag out a circular mask like that. So 300 is probably good for the radius there. Let's make sure to center it up. And I might just feather it in just a little bit. So let's go for maybe negative 100. And so what that's doing is it's kind of focusing the lens flare in on that kind of that central area. And there's just one other final little refinement I'm going to do, and that's to each of these groups, apart from the original one, I'm going to add a color curve. So I'm going to do the, the second group up. Let's show you what I mean. Color, color curves. And I just want to progressively brighten these. So this one I'm going to kind of go to maybe there with the color curves. Actually, I can copy that, paste it onto the next group up, and let's just increase that like so, Command-C to copy and paste it onto the top group here. And let's go even further, so that's really bright in the middle. Might have gone too far, but I just wanted to give you that idea. It creates more of a sense of the, the, the light in the background if we just kind of get them a little bit more bright as they get towards the, the center. And the final thing we could do is to add a little bit of a zoom. So I'm going to take this group that's got the main elements in it, and I'm going to set its scale down to zero. And I'm going to add parameter behavior ramp. And I'm going to have a start value of 100 and an end value of 150. And that just drifts everything towards us gently like that. And that kind of just adds to that nice tunnel effect. So there you go, that's the effect. Really quite simple, but really rather effective and, and a nice organic look, I think. So I hope that's been useful. Thanks very much indeed for watching and see you again another time.